We want to greet everybody in the Philippines, across Asia, and anywhere in the world. We want to greet you a very, very Merry Christmas. It's been a pretty crazy last year and a half, two years. But one of the things that we celebrate, well, the main thing we celebrate this year is the birth of our Savior. His birth was miraculous. His life was miraculous. His death, burial, and resurrection was miraculous. And the life that he gives us is also miraculous. And no matter how crazy or how bad it seems, remember, you and I have a Savior who was born of a virgin, which is impossible outside of God. And there may be things that surround us that look impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. We want you to know that we miss you all, and we love you all dearly, and it is our prayer that you have a beautiful, God-filled Christmas. Take the time to uh, hug and, and embrace and appreciate the family and friends around you. And as we go into this season, be grateful. Be grateful and appreciative and celebrate uh, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that eternal life is yours, that God's intention and plan for you is good, and the people and the friends that surround you. And we love you and pray you have a very, very blessed, God-filled Christmas season, holiday, and the peace of God fill your heart and your mind. And Sister Shadi is going to step in, and she has a wonderful, wonderful word for all of you. God bless you. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to talk with you. What a time to exalt the Lord, which we do all year long. But of course, during this time, how thrilling it is to proclaim the name of the Lord and my message to you today is called the things that were said. The things that were said concerning the birth of Christ. And, and also before I for, begin, I have been struggling with all sorts of things, you know, like a cold and laryngitis. So I'm sure my voice is going to be cracking in and out of this message, but God is still great. But the things that were said, the things that were said by God about the birth of Christ, the things that were said by the prophets, the angels, by Mary, by Elizabeth, by Zechariah, what was said by the wise men, what was said is so powerful. And sometimes pastors, we look for messages, but it's all been said. And to quote what's been said and to ponder what's been said and to let it seep into us, the prophetic words, it's all from God, through different avenues. Here it is, what was said, what was said to the baby, the Messiah, Yeshua, to the parents when they took him after his birth to the temple, what was said by Simeon, what was said by the prophetess Anna, the words spoken, the words still declared about him, all about him. So let's look at what was said. Now, of course, I, I can't go through what everything that was said, the scholars have studied at least 500, 400 to maybe 600 prophetic words about Christ, but 300 were fulfilled the day he was born. So of course we will not go through all of that, which is a glorious word study, but we will study or just look at and pull from these beautiful words spoken by prophets and angels and Simeon and Zechariah and, and Anna. The, what was said matters. Everything said was about Christ, his kingdom, his rule and reign, his eternal rule and reign. Everything said was he is God in the flesh. Everything said of him is about hope and joy, even in the middle of political confusion. So 
what was said starting in Genesis when God spoke in Genesis chapter three. I am going to be, I'm on a table here. Some try to be somewhat organized. Um, in Genesis three, after God, after the sin of man, after the fall of man, God's plan was spoken. God did not leave us in our sinful state. God did not leave us in our fallen state. He spoke. And he spoke after he judged the man and woman, Adam and Eve. He cursed the devil. And I just love that he cursed the devil. And he proclaimed to the devil, there is one coming. There is one coming. It will be the seed of the woman. Oh, and there is a crushing and a bruising about to happen to the plan of the enemy. And deliverance is declared in those verses. God did not leave us in our state. He declared through the second Adam, mankind would be redeemed. And so God has the first and final word always. So God is winning. God is the one who declares by his sovereignty, the word spoken, even in the sinful state, in the state of where he judged Adam and Eve, he still spoke of his plan. And that thrills me. The prophets, like I said, 300 prophecies fulfilled at his birth. Words spoken. These words surround us still. And the prophets long to see the fulfillment of what God was saying to them. So we'll turn to Isaiah. And I'm just going to stick with a few verses in Isaiah to make it through what the others have said, lest we get overwhelmed with the prophecies in the Old Testament, where obviously they are. And like I said before, go study them. They're beautiful. So here we have in Isaiah 7, 14. In the middle of darkness, in the middle of chaos, a prophetic word is spoken. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. And behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. It sounds like what Gabriel said to Joseph when he was comforting Joseph in a dream. It sounds like what he said to Mary. It sounds the same for it is the proclamation that a virgin shall conceive. We must stop there and give glory to God. For the beginning of everything that we celebrate is a miracle. It is divine. It is from heaven. It is not of man. It is glorious. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And then, therefore, the Lord himself he says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. This sign is from God. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and you will call his name Emmanuel. And then in the New Testament, we will learn, you will call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Throughout your day, throughout your life, quote, God is with us. He was with us in his birth. He is with us in his earth life. Remember in John 14, where Philip said, to Jesus. Jesus, show us the Father that it would be sufficient for us. And what was Jesus's answer? Have I not been with you all this time, Philip, and you don't know me? If you have seen me, you've seen the Father also. Never have a theology that diminishes the deity of Christ, no matter how much you try to explain his humanity. He was never one of us in the full capacity of a human. He was born of a virgin. He is God's son, one and only begotten son. Emmanuel, 
God with us. The glory he laid aside is not his deity. He is God. The glory is taking on, he laid aside was taking on flesh that he could be and fulfill the lamb of God who dies for the world. Hallelujah. So here it is, the words that were spoken. And a virgin will conceive. And then you go over to Isaiah chapter eight. Now chapter eight is full of oppression and gloom and, and doom. And it's Isaiah chapter eight is hard to read. But God, once again, speaks of the promises and he speaks to you today of the promises. He is the promise. Christ is the promise proclaimed from Genesis to the birth of Christ. 4,000 years in preparation for this moment, 700 years after Isaiah speaks, Christ is born. Oh, the preparation, the glory and the wonder. Everything is a miracle from beginning, middle and end. The first advent, the second advent, it is all glorious and it's all about God among us and by his Holy Spirit now lives in us. So these words spoken, um, Isaiah 8 can be just awful to read, which we won't. And um, the oppression, well, how about if we read our own national newspapers, the oppression, the sorrow, our own lives at times, but God, but God, the miracle God is among us. And in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, after all the oppression, he says, but wait, but wait, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. What? In all the oppression of coming wars and the sorrow of chapter eight in chapter nine, Isaiah speaks in the darkness of the light that shall come. And he actually puts it in terms as if he already has. For unto us, a son, a child is born. Well, he hasn't been born yet. That's the prophetic word of God. He declares it before it even is in manifested to our eyes because to God it's done. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So a child is born, this is divine. This is the natural side, a, a child is born, nonetheless divine. And a son is given, the son of God. And the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor. His name is called Mighty God. Not an anointed man walking among us. Though he was, but his name is called Mighty God. Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. This is Christ. This is the Messiah. This is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. This is the one the wise men said when they came into Jerusalem. What did the wise men say? We have followed his star and we have come to worship him. This is not spoken of a normal man. We do not have a star. He has the star and we worship him. And the wise men said, we have come to worship him. That is all the wise men said. Now to Herod, they said, you know, um, a child will be born and then we have seen his star. They were not afraid to say we have come to worship him. They traveled two years to come and worship him, God in the flesh. So anyway, back to this, because it's so exciting, Isaiah 9. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of his increase, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. What did the angels say to the shepherds? 
peace and goodwill to all and and on earth peace christ is that peace there will be no end there is always an end to the governments of man but not the government of god in christ upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from this time forward even forevermore and the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this so in the beginning it sounds like it's done but the but the prophetic clock and the orchestration of the holy ghost knows to perform this so the words are spoken for unto us a child is born and then 700 years later it happens it happens at a specific time and that specific time is called the fullness of time galatians 4 4 mentions that in the fullness of time let me read that because it's so beautiful the way it's written but when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law verse 5 to redeem those hallelujah to redeem to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons and it, and it goes on of course the context is as beautiful as what i just highlighted the words spoken from genesis to these words 700 years later then we know the christmas story the the gospel of matthew and luke speak of these stories luke being more detailed but yet matthew bringing in beautiful points as well what did the angel say what did the angel say to zachariah before he spoke to mary what did the angel say how great john would be and because of time restraints, I won't get into exactly what Zachariah said, but the angels were always speaking. God is always speaking. And then what did the angel say to Mary? Let's go to Luke chapter one. So we have these 10 verses here that just beautiful from 28. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee. So we know that story in verse 28. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. It is amazing how often rejoicing, joy is mentioned, peace is mentioned. Rejoice. Huh? She probably was like, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe it's rejoicing in heart. I don't think it was lifting her hands and dancing around. But God, wants us to rejoice when he speaks but here in this story rejoice highly favored one the lord is with you blessed are you among women and when she saw him she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was then the angel said to her do not be afraid mary for you have found favor with god and behold you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and you shall call his name jesus and he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Glory to God. And of course, we know what Mary said. How can this be? For I've not been with a man. And then the angel said, <laughs> oh, I love it. Verse 35, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, this miraculous work can only be explained to you, Mary, by the Holy Spirit. How familiar is even the term Holy Spirit? Though the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, it's mentioned throughout scriptures, but the Holy Spirit we only learn the manifestations and the terminologies of the Holy Spirit through Christ and, and, and then the epistles and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. 
Oh, she must have just stood there in amazement. We stand in amazement when the Holy Spirit comes upon us or moves through us or speaks through us. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. The term Son of God is a messianic term for the Messiah, the prophesied one. And then he speaks to her about Elizabeth and says she in her old age will have a child. Mary is learning all this. And verse 37, after he says the barren one, Elizabeth, will have a child, he says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. So from the moment of his entrance of, you know, blessings to you, Mary, highly favored one, it, the, the bookends end with nothing with God, nothing that God says will be impossible. Nothing that God decrees is impossible. Brothers and sisters, pastors, all listening. When God has decreed it, you as Mary, as Joseph, as Elizabeth, as even Zachariah after, you know, after his judgment of silence, he believed and, and he was praising God. Praising God for his word is glorious and holy and is not a natural thing. This is divine. This is of God. This is awesome. For it is from heaven. For all that we believe, this is heavenly. This is of a different realm. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The glory of the highest will overshadow you. The things spoken. And then Mary says, behold, the maidservant or the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed. These words, these words, these holy words. This is the Christmas story. Right in the middle of a census and political upheaval and Herod. And all the evils that can be in our nations and history itself, God sovereignly has orchestrated times and events. And we believe his word and we give him praise. Praise be unto God. You know, in Matthew, we'll go back over to Matthew chapter one. It's a, a wonderful Matthew, like I said before, Matthew and Luke. And Joseph was so concerned, obviously, because his wife is pregnant and he didn't know what to do, but he didn't want to shame her. And so it, chapter one, verse 20 says, but while Joseph thought about these things, about her with child, about Elizabeth being pregnant about all that Mary had told him, I am with child. And he didn't want to put her away and shame her. He thought about these things. And what happened in, in verse 20, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. God is always moving in the midst of our fears, it brings us right back to the word. What is our foundation? What is being spoken? The foundation of all that we believe is in Matthew 1 and 2 and Luke 1 and 2. These verses and the prophets, of course, and Isaiah and his name shall be called. It is the glory of Christ. It's all about him. It's all about the Messiah. It's all, everything is about what we're celebrating now. Even though we all have, I have a little Christmas village and Christmas trees, Oh, but we take this moment and we remember, hallelujah, what was spoken and what they said. And this is, again, the angel saying in a dream, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, to take 
to you, Mary, your wife, already was his wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child, bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means and translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Glory to God. And and the next event, which I already preempted and spoke of, is the wise men coming into Jerusalem, saying, where is the child? We have seen his star and we have come to worship him. I won't get into what Herod said, because it's obvious by what he did. And so how beautiful they wanted to worship. And so Mary wants to go visit Elizabeth. And so we've all seen the movie. If you watch the movie Nativity or any of these movies that show Mary going to visit Elizabeth. And he walks in, he walks in to see Mary and, and, uh, Elizabeth and the child within Elizabeth jumps. The child leaps in her womb. The child in her says, The moment I heard your voice, the child leapt within me. This is John, as we know, John the Baptist. And, and Mary is shocked again and stunned. And so Elizabeth says, what is this? And how did you know? And they both had the same angel, Gabriel, visit them and speak to them. Then she spoke out with a loud voice, blessed are you, this is Elizabeth, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord, oh my goodness, see, they understood from the law, they understood the prophecies of the coming Messiah, the mother of my Lord. The mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as I heard your voice and the greeting, the baby within me leapt for joy. There's a lot of joy going on here. Blessed is she who believed. For there will be the fulfillment of these things which were told to her from the Lord. And then Mary said, I mean, there's a Holy Ghost meeting going on here between Elizabeth and Mary. And then Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regarded my lowly state. Now, I want you to hear what Mary says by the spirit of the Lord. And behold, henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Well, we know that one. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. So after she praises God for what God has done in her and through her, now it's spoken over us. The mercy is on, his mercy is on all who fear him from generation to generation for he has shown strength with his arm and he has scattered the proud and the imaginations of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. Has he? It is declared. It is declared that you are full. It is declared that you are blessed. Mary is speaking. Her and Elizabeth are having a prophetic Holy Ghost meeting <laughs> right then and there. Oh, glory to God. And he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich, or we could say the haughty, because it's not bad to be rich, but it's bad to be selfish and haughty. He has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy 
as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. What a word to speak. What a word to declare. And that Mary then goes back, has the baby. Miracles are happening. Do you realize the angels, the night of his birth, the angels visit the shepherds. All you shepherds out there, God visits you first. He visited them first. And why? He visits those who tend to the flock. And he visited them and said beautiful things that he said, this is a sign. He's in Bethlehem. He's in swaddling clothes. You'll find him in a manger. And the host of heaven, the, the host of angels filled the heavens and had something to say. They had something to say. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Glory to God. The angels have something to say. And we mimic them and, and cry out glory to God in the highest. He spoke to the shepherds and told them. And then two years later, the wise men showed up. The wise men did not show up at the manger. They showed up at a house when the child was a young child. Took them two years to find or to travel, not find, to travel. All the sequence of events. But on the eighth day after Jesus was born, they go into the temple for circumcision. And they go in and they meet a man named Simeon, a righteous man. Who walks up and says, now I can die. God promised me I wouldn't die until I saw the savior of the world. Wow. Can you imagine Joseph and Mary and all that they were hearing and absorbing? It is glorious and divine. And then they meet a prophetess, Anna. And she looks at the child. And it all it says she did was rejoice. But before that, it says she was in the temple praising all the time and fasting all the time and telling people about the coming Messiah. But when she saw him, she just rejoiced. So this is the message. This is the, the divine, the word spoken. And go back and read Zechariah's words over John. It's just beautiful because Christ is in there. John's whole purpose was to prepare the way. So of the Lord. And may the words that are holy and filled with glory and filled with God's breath upon them touch each and every one of you. It's all glorious. It's all holy. It's all beautiful. This is the Christmas story. Giving glory unto Christ, praising our King, knowing he is God. Being at peace always because he has come. The Lord bless all of you and the words spoken and surrounded and surrounding him. And his name shall be called. Oh, I love that wonderful counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, everlasting father. God is with you. And if you have received him, if you have like Nicodemus, you know, God has an appointment with you like he had Nicodemus to speak of heavenly things, not only earthly things, but heavenly things. And one of those heavenly things is a term called born again. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And when you understand eternal life and you understand born of the spirit and the life God gives, and the miracle of it all, you understand, oh, so the second birth, I understand the second birth. I was born once of my parents and now I'm born of God. And it's the terminology of the Bible. It's the glory of the Bible and it's the glory of him coming. God is with us and God is with you. I love you all. 
remember the words that they said. Amen. Amen.